up guys, Hicking here, bringing you uh, this week's manga reaction to uh, One Piece, chapter 1053, and chapter 1052, because I didn't release a video for that last week, and I actually did record my reaction and review to it, but then the footage didn't record the bloody footage. I was using uh, the webcam that I got, and I was using, I think, photo booth, but for some reason, photo, photo, is it phone booth? I think phone booth, let me see, yeah, photo booth doesn't work anymore, apparently. So that was 30 minutes of my life utterly wasted. So I'm going to go through the previous chapter very quickly, if I can, and then I'm going to go through the new chapter, alright? So let's do this, and try and do it fast. Because I really want to read this week's chapter because this is the last chapter we are getting for a month because Oda is going on a break. He's going on a break to do several things and one of those things is basically to start working on the final saga of One Piece. So yeah, we're officially pretty much about to reach the end basically. So Wano's still not over and it's not over by the end of this chapter apparently. It's, this arc is still going to be going. When we come back we're still going to be in Wano. But uh, yeah, it becomes a case of when does the final saga then begin? Does it begin post Wano? Does it begin after another arc? Because we still have Elbaf to go to, but maybe this is it. Maybe this is uh, the end of the Four Emperors saga, if you will. And then we're going to move on to wherever the next one is. So yeah, let's just get through. Let's just get through this now. Come on, get all the chapters out. So new morning. And remember guys, before I start, of course, we're going to like and subscribe please I hope you do it's always refreshing when someone does yeah and let's do this so yes chapter 1052 of One Piece New Morning we the cover page is Germa 66 Cold-Blooded Voyage Volume 14 a certain scientist failed to get away so we catch up with a Caesar basically who never escaped Whole Cake Island and he's going now by what's his new name Gustino, right? Well, he's there, and as Raiju and uh, Ninju, I think, are walking past, they, uh, I believe Raiju is the one who notices him. So, yeah, most likely he's going to be going uh, with, with, with Jamma 66. They're going to rescue him, he's going to go with them, and potentially they're going to be getting upgrades and new weapons, etc., etc. Whatever the future holds, it's going to be beautiful, I imagine. But moving on to the actual chapter itself, we start at the Holy Land, Mary Joiso, if you will, a grave situation. So, Nika has finally emerged. Two emperors have fallen. We won't be able to cover this up. The whole world will latch onto this news. The timing could not be any worse. How do we deal with this? Sir, the, the seas around Wado. Are you certain the elephant is gone? Yes, it wandered into the mist. Just what was that? And then we're cutting back to one of the Gorosei, I think, as he's talking to whoever is on the ship. So the borders are staying closed for now. That means Wano is still almost impenetrable. It appears that they have modified their plan in light of the current situation. At least one of them has considerable guile. Now, even with our numbers, a direct invasion will be impossible. We can still have Nico Robin brought to us, correct? And, uh, and we find out that it's the CPO member on the ship that escaped that's talking to the Gorosei. And he's like, yes... And he seems to be a bit nervous, like he's not even answering it. And then uh, someone else starts talking on the uh, Den Den Mushi. So first off, the Gorosei 100% know about Luffy now having awakened his devil fruit. They know it's Nika. They don't want anyone finding out about this. They also want to get into Wano, but they can't because now the borders are officially closed. And Zuchina has left. So, you know, we were here expecting her to go in and smack around the ships and that. That's not happening. She is gone, so... Or he's gone. Is Ushina a man or a woman? Either way, the elephant's gone, so there's no battle here. And, you know, Wano, uh, the marines outside Wano are pretty much stuck down there, like... But they want Nico Robin captured. That's important to remember. But yeah, someone seems to be talking on the uh, Dende, uh, Dende... Or the Dendemushi to the CPO. And here we go, CPO. CPO, come in. Someone is hijacking our signal. Listen up. Who is this? Stay where you are. I'm on my way. So someone is talking to them and saying they're on their way. Who could that be? I think most likely it's probably a green ball, maybe. Because we, we saw him last chapter, uh, you know, heading there, I think. Or oh, is this the end of this chapter? I'm not too sure. I don't remember. But, uh, yeah, we, we cut into we cut into Onigashima. Seen it outside uh, the flower capital. I'm about to sneeze. 
Bless me. And after 20 years of tyranny in Wano, the news of the Kazuki victory is being met with a, jubil a jubilation. Castle interior Onigashima. Ha ha ha. So we're cut into X Drake and Haw and Hawk and Hawkins. Uh, Drake on the ground and Hawkins barely managing to stand up onto the wall. You know, it seems he's bleeding out. Drake, so you were a marine dog this whole time. You really expect me to answer that? It could be Drake talking to the CPR member. I'm not too sure. It could be him. Don't you have anything else to say? And Hawkins just breathing. And now he he, he slams onto the uh, beam and he's and he's and he's falling down. You look like hell. I thought those precious cards of yours promised that you'd be safe if you stuck with Kaido. And then Hawkins admits that uh, I submitted to that monster when he showed up because I knew doing otherwise would be courting death. But Kid and his crew fought to the bitter end. They were prepared to die. But even if I did foresee his victory, do you really think I would have gone calling back to him? Hmm. If you're going to switch sides now, switch sides now's the time. What are your cards telling you? And Hawkins, this is a flashback, by the way, in that moment where, you know, where x Drake was asking him that question, like, and Hawkins answered with, I am divi divining tomorrow's survival chances for a certain man. Only 1%. What a pity. And then x Drake responds, now in the present time, when you were foretelling the future, the man you were talking about, Hawkins answers, it was me. And you can see blood behind him and that, and then he just goes down even further. We just see his hair in the next panel shot, and that's it. It seems Hawkins is dead. He died. That was it. That was Hawkins. He's gone. So the man he predicted that only had what a 1% chance of survival was Hawkins himself. Yeah, he's gone. It looks like he's dead. It's like, it looks like this is how Older is going to wrap up one of the uh, Supernova. Kind of a shame. You know, I kind of hoped Hawkins would do a bit more. We would get some backstory. But no, it seems he's gone. Unless x Straight got off his ass and saves his life. Uh, which is very likely to happen, but at the moment, I guess it's it, it, we can say that for now, Hawkins is one of the characters who's died in this arc. So then we cut to a time skip. We get a time jump. The flower capital, seven days after the end of the war. So we get a seven day, basically a week time jump, and there's just celebrations and people celebrating and cheering, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, if you will, it's it's in seven days. It looks like it's become a more lively and happy place. So don't take down the decorations yet. Momonosuke-sama, no, the Shogun has decreed that we'll have another festival soon. Uh, we're cutting to various people. Uh, Miss uh, Sarabi isn't coming back, how come? Uh, so we're cutting to this school here. Uh, sorry, but we have to restart your history lessons on our country's heroes from scratch. As all the students like, seriously? And you got this one dude, looks like he's a, like, I don't know, I think he's maybe one of the samurai or just normal Wano dudes. Like, oh, our first lesson will be the stor story of the wonderful Kazuki Oda. I still, and then we got into the citizens, celebrating, smiling, they're happy. I still can't believe that Wano's greatest beauty, Komorosaki, is really old Osama's daughter. I heard that the Kappa uh, Kawawatsu Dano saved her from the blazing castle. And we got into children drinking, what an incredible display of loyalty. Uh, and another scabbard was watching over things this whole time. Kiyoshiro, the noble Yakuza boss, was really Denjiro Dono in disguise. Yeah, and I'm cutting to we're cutting to various parts of Wano at this point, and we're seeing the different reactions and the different attitudes of the people there. So now we're cutting to Paradise Farm. Uh, does anybody know about anything about the man that took down Kaido? He's apparently a warrior known as Joy Boy. I heard he's no longer in the country. I would have loved to see him in person. His heroism rivals the legendary God of the Blade. So people are comparing uh, Joy Boy. To uh, Ry Ryuman, I believe, uh, the, and uh, it seems that uh, Luffy's victory has been kept quiet. Now, is this bigger? Is this Nomonosuke keeping it quiet, or is this Luffy? I imagine it's Luffy himself keeping this defeat quiet for whatever reason, and all referring to it as Joy Boy and not Luffy. But this is gonna get out. The news is gonna get out. Okay, if the Goro say no about what's happened, someone else is gonna have happened. Okay, and we're gonna get those bounties. And everyone's going to find out that Luffy was the one who defeated Kaido. So keeping this a bit hidden is a bit weird. We do see in these panels that there's food. So this is the, this is the farm where all the food apparently is being made. You see large amounts of food on a cart. So people are smiling and celebrating. We're cutting to the eternal graves of Ringo. Uh, where we get confirmation of characters that have died, basically. We get this panel and there's Kinemon and Kawatsu by the stairs. And above the uh, shrine uh, building is Marco. And it's snowing here. We're building another shrine, yes. From the hill, they'll be overlooking the flower capital, just like the god of the blade, Ryuman. Yeah, a lot, a lot of uh, references to uh, uh, callbacks to Ryuman in this chapter. We will put Oda Summer to rest here, 
and he will be surrounded by all his allies, starting with Rai, Rai Zudano and all the other Diamond who fought for this country. Ugh. And ending with uh, Ashura and Aizo. So we get confirmation finally that Ashura and Aizo did indeed die. You know, a lot of people... A lot of people in this arc were like, oh, no one dies in One Piece. No one's died in this arc, etc, etc. But no, characters did die. Ashura and Aizo are dead. The, the, those are, are two confirmed 100% dead characters. We see that, that Ashura's sword and Aizo's pistols have been gathered and they're placed next to each other inside the shrine. But they're dead. That confirms they're done. Bit of a shame, it's sad, but, you know, we had to lose some characters and we lost them, so fair enough. And keep in mind, Aizo has been around in the series for a long time. She was part of the original black, white, white beard uh, pirate crew. So this is a friend of Marco's who's passed away, so he's just lost another uh, member. And, uh, you know, God knows what's going to happen when he finds out about Weevil going around and killing all the other... Uh, members of the white beard crew so you know that has to be dealt with at some point but i imagine it's breaking marco down inside a lot you know ever since white beard's defeat and death they've just been losing more and more members at this point you've got the fox or the wolf or whatever that comes in uh, and he's going to co out series like kappa kappa i think we'll be I think we'll be on it uh, someday too uh, uh, onimaru it's good to see you alive and well and then we see marco flying down next to kinemon uh <coughs> yeah, God, bless me again. Uh, and Akinamon is talking to him. Is that is that fine with you, Marco Dono? Of course, it's only right that his final resting place is in his home country. And we're cutting to Marco. It seems like I've been left behind once again to say goodbye. Yeah, it's really sad, actually. When you think about Marco's predicament, it's really tragic, actually, that he's losing all of his family and friends, basically. And uh, Kawawatsu, we know the feeling. And then back to Kinemon, we are the ones who remain. If something were to happen to any more of our heroes, I don't think I could take it. And then, uh, yeah, we're seeing the flower capital. We're cutting to the flower capital. Let us pray for their good health. And we're cutting to the flower capital. And on top of the flower capital, we see Yamato. She's on top of the building. And she's like, I'm so hungry. No, I'm not. I'm not hungry. I'm not. And now we're hearing, we're cutting to someone uh, screaming out, oh, Brother, you've got to hear this. Hmm? You too, y Yamato kun. So it seems Komorosaki is is calling out basically uh, Luffy Ta so Luffy Taro son and Zoro Juro son oh uh, Yamato getting excited coming out of uh, waking up and we're cutting to this panel of Momonosuke getting kicked double kicked in the face flying double kicked in the face by uh, Komorosaki basically or is her real name Hayori I believe it's Hayori right they finally opened their eyes and yeah Omo was like oh will you stop being a two boy no not that it hurts so uh, Hayori seems to be in very high spirits like she's gone from this very serious sort of person to this very chillaxed uh uh just just yeah like uh, I wasn't expecting that to be honest I, I wasn't expecting that kind of attitude but yeah it's it's crazy it's crazy to see her act and behave like this and in the next panel, the next pages of you all were cut into Luffy, to both Luffy and Zoro waking up. They've been in this room basically, and this very same room where they've been recovering. They're just bringing all the food, and all the characters are now jumping in. You've got Luffy waking up screaming meat. You've got Zoro waking up booze. And we're, and then down below in the panel, in this mega panel where all the celebration is happening, you've got Sanji sitting down with uh, you know whoever that little girl is. You've got people carrying uh, like pots and other people bringing in meat. So the booze and the meat coming from different directions. You got, uh, I'm trying to see, there's, there's Nami with Yasu's kid. You've got the, you've got the mink uh, nurse there, you know, just uh, by the beds, obviously, I guess, ready to take care. Uh, you've got uh, Dr. Miyaki there with like a blood bag, I think. Uh, you've got a, 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 a Hayori and Momonosuke coming in. You got Nuku, what is it? Nuki Nikomomushi, is it? A uh, cat viper behind Luffy and Zoro just on the main table, I think. Next to Brooke, just like playing a song. You got Yamato rushing in. So, Luffy, Zoro, you're finally awake. More meat coming right up. This man, this is great. Give me seconds. Uh, and uh, Nikomomushi is having a time of his life. Another Luffy, you're hit, you're up. So yeah, very very chaotic at this point it seems, and then and then and we're cutting to Momonosuke screaming, Luffy, Zoro, save some room for later. I've been waiting for you two to wake up, wake so I could summon the whole country for a huge banquet. Let's do it today. You got Yamato like going in and hugging Luffy. You got Chopper hugging Zoro, 
uh, uh, wait, don't you recognize me? Oh, right, uh, Zoro and Luffy don't recognize Momonosuke because I don't think they haven't seen his adult form yet. Don't you recognize me? I'm Momonosuke. And he's like, what? You're really an adult now? You look pretty strong. Is it because you've uh, you've got all this blood? L uh, let me take a crack at you. Uh, knock it off. <laughs> Is that Zoro said he wants to take a crack? And then we get the moment that I wanted to see. We, we get this moment that I, I was curious about, like, what would happen. And it's basically you know, Momonosuke throwing himself at Nami's breast, right? I mean, he was doing this the whole time when he was like a when he had, when he was in his little kid form, but now as an adult, what's Nami gonna do? And he's like, no, Nami, those friends, those two fr those two feeds are picking on me again. Please save me! And Nami smacks the crap out of him and sends him flying. Get off me! Uh, and yeah, but I'm still an eight year old. I'm still eight years old. Not not that not not that this hurts. Uh, he's like rubbing his cheek and Nami's like, oh, I guess that's true. And Luffy and Zoro just watching, yep, he's definitely tougher. And then you've got both Sanji and Brooke basically giving like the happy evil stink eye, basically like, ah, gaha, welcome to adulthood, Momo. And Sanji like, no more special privileges for you. So he's very happy. He's very happy this has happened. Uh, we're getting Yamato putting a plate on, on Momonosuke's head to make, to make his face or haircut look similar to his dad. Uh, like, he's still a child on the inside, but on the outside, he's basically older now. He's like, quit putting plates on my head, yeah. Uh, you should thank your parents for giving you such a strong body. I'm still, I'm sure you'll be the number one samurai in the country someday. I will give it, I will, I will give it my all. So, yeah, yeah, yeah he's just patting him, like, but Momo, he, Momo looks a bit annoyed. We're cutting to Nami now. Yamato, let's take a bath together before the festival. Your Virgil has ended, right? And Luffy's like, Vir and there's Jubei as well, it's like, uh, sitting there with them, Virgil. In Wano, they have a custom to give something up until their prayers are answered by the gods. Uh, and that's Jubei explaining that to Luffy. And now Yamato's like, I swore not to eat or bathe until the two of you recovered. Ah. Seriously? Thanks, Yamo, bro. That must be why I'm feeling so great. Uh, what a good person. Uh, Jubei's like, what a good person. So they, 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 mu they must know now that, yeah, at this point, like... The fact that yeah, 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 uh, Luffy's even calling her Yamo, bro, like, okay, he's showing that sign of respect to her. And then we're seeing Hayori is next to Zoro. So yeah, another moment I think we all wanted to see. I'm surprised you're not dirty. I'm surprised we're not dirty ourselves. Like, Zoro's just looking at him. Zoro's like, yo, why am I so clean? That's what's going on. And Hayori's like, that's because I was in charge of wiping your bodies clean. Does that please you, Teehee? And yeah, Sanji, understandably, getting jealous and pissed and burning up. Moss said, you bastard, how could you? And now we're cutting, we're cutting to that flashback to when uh, Sanji told uh, Zoro, after the dust settles, if I'm, no, if I'm no longer myself, I want you to put me down. And Zoro's like, oh yeah. And now we're cutting to Zoro and Sanji fighting, having a skirmish in the background. We only see the silhouettes. And Zoro's like, he's like, he's remembering that conversation he had with Sanji. He's like, oh yeah, I must have returned from hell to fulfill my promise to kill you. And Sanji's like, I don't need your help with that anymore. And while that's going on, we're cutting to the women, we're cutting to Hayori and Yamato and Nami, and Yamato to, is going to, Yami, to Nami. This castle doesn't have mixed baths, so I'll pass Nami. Uh, and uh, Hayori's, well, well, I I would like to join if, if you're okay with that. I think this is Hayori. It, it could also be... It could also be, what's her name, Okiki, but I, I could be wrong. A lot of the character models look similar, so Robin's not here, by the way. I think this is very important to point out. Robin's not here in this chapter, okay? I don't know where she is. I think it's pretty obvious where she might have gone, actually, because we still need to find that road polygraph, but she's not here. And now we're cutting to Castle, to Castle Olsen, and basically we're getting bath time with all the characters at this point. So, uh, it's bath time. So first we're cutting to the man's bath, and unexpectedly, Yamato is in the man's bath. So yeah, she's joining the guys, okay, uh, which is like, what? So we got Zoro there with Saki, or booze in his hand, we got Chopper next to him, we got Yamato next to Chopper, we got Luffy in the middle, uh, Private's obviously not being shown because of the water splashing, we got Nukumamushi behind him, we've got Brooke just sort of swilling in there, we got Sanchi behind Brooke, flying in the air, nosebleed, because yeah, we can see Nama, Yamato's breast, though they're, they're covered by, they're covered by the, uh, the, I, I don't know what you call it, the, 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 the soap, <laughs> uh, we got Jubei there, and then next to Jubei, we got Momonosuke, and he's like, he, he's blushing red, like, Yamato, you, and like, San, it's both Sanji and Brook. this is a dream, <laughs> they're like, they're, they're in disbelief, and then Luffy's like, yeah, this is the best, we're, we're, when we're done, let's party, and Yama, like, Yamato's like, the temperature is just right, and Luffy, Zoro just smiling and laughing, yeah, unexpected, unexpected that Yamato would join them, 
But I, I, yeah, I need to do. I need to say this. I need to say this. At this point now, I, we we have a new trio. Okay, this is the new trio, and the new trio consists of Zoro, Sanji, and Yamato. Luffy's not part of that trio anymore. And the reason for that is very bloody obvious and simple, okay? Because he's now on a higher plane of existence compared to Zoro and Sanji, you know? You cannot compare him to the trio anymore. You can't put him on the same level. This dude is God now, but he's God level, basically, okay? He's above them too. And you've got Yamato now joining the crew, joining this, 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 this hard knock of characters. And she's one of the stronger characters as well. So, yeah, she's in a way, she in a way will replace Luffy as the, uh, a trio member that has a dab fruit, basically, if you will. Like she's part of that group now, because you, 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 you we can't call them. What, what's the word for a trio? Called triplets or something? I don't think you could. I can't, I don't think you can use that that term. Okay, because uh, comparing having uh, comparing Luffy to Zoro and Sanji is a joke. Like no, no, he he he's there. He's there, and these guys are like in the freaking middle now. And Yamato's there to 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 fill that gap, basically. And it's going to be interesting to see the dynamics at this point. It's going to be interesting because I imagine I, I imagine Yamato is going to be all for training with Zoro, and uh, probably maybe even uh, uh, having goals with Sanji as well and having fun with him. Uh, like it, it's going to be very interesting to see that dynamic because like we've got we've got this very tomboyish, badass female character. That's not to say that Robin and Nami aren't badass; they are. But this is like a, it, it, it's having a female character that's sort of going to be on the same level as the boys, basically. And that's going to be fun to see in the interaction. So I'm looking forward to that. So if you thought that was fan service, we get more fan service as we cut to the woman's bath, right? And we see, we see uh, uh, Shino, Shinobu was in. Who's the Shinobu? The female Konochi, Konochi that's in the bath there. We got Nami and, we, and she's holding uh, Otama up in her arms and Otama playing with Nami's breasts, basically. Uh, we got, uh, we got uh, Okiki there. As you can see that she's only got one arm. She's kneeling down in the bath. We got uh, Hayori there. We got Yazu's daughter in the background. We've got Speed and Karen. Uh, showering so yeah uh, the the guys sure are loud i hope i become bewitching one day to uh, uh, bewitching too one day i think this is otama saying this funny enough and uh okiki i always need to bath in older sub with older summer and the others before but it would be too embarrassing to join men i'm not used to so yeah remember o okiki considers herself a, a man basically i think i think she this was confirmed she's transgender basically but uh, it, it's very it's very uh, ironic You've got you've got Yamato, who's basically a female, but she goes by the name of Oda. Like uh, you know, I, I think the Viva card was released as well that officially confirms that she is a woman. She, okay, she is a woman, but she's just going with the sort of two boyish identity of I want to be a man. And then you've got Okiki, who's transgender. You know, she she's a woman uh, who thinks of herself as a man, but she's showering with no. It's a nice. I think it's a nice sort of parallel thing that they're trying to do here, which is fine. I like it. It's great. Uh, it just you get these sort of interactions basically. Uh, I, I feel I feel like Okiki is like being Hayori's bodyguard, really. The, the way Hayori's just sort of sticking next to Okiki there, um, and then of course we got you look just like you did back then, uh, Okiki Cho. I think that's Hayori saying that. I think I'm older than you now, uh, and and uh, obviously Yazu's door. Like this is so nice. It's so weird seeing these characters like half like basically naked, basically like it's just it's just weird, uh, especially with the. Like kids being involved, it's like okay, uh, yeah, let's tone it down a bit. Like, come on, uh, it's, it, it, man, I, man, I, I, I wonder what I wonder what bars in Japan like this are like, and, and they do mixed bars as well, man. Oh, damn. Uh, so now we're cutting to we're cutting to the flower capital and the people are there. The banquet is being held today. It's time to really celebrate the return of the Kozoki clan. Get word out to every region. And now we're cutting to uh, to 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 Kage to Kage Port Yudo, and we see all the three main ships side by side. We've got Law Submarine. We have got Kids Dinosaur Ship, and then we got the Sunny there. We see that. Uh, Usopp and Frankie are there. You know, we were wondering why they weren't there with the guys. Usopp and Frankie missing out. They are missing out. I, I imagine they're going to be very jealous when they see this, like when they find out about this, when they hear about this. But yeah, they're there. Pew, finally got everything ship shape. And Usopp, yep, they look ready to see. He's been actually helping on fixing all the ships for the for the, for the the allies and that as well, it seems. And then, uh, we're, we're, yeah, we, we get, we're seeing Frankie. We see, we've see got General Frankie there. General Frankie is, is as good as new too. We're going to Beppo and Kello who are there. So that means Kid and Law are there as well. That's so cool. Like, 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 and, and uh, at the same time, I don't know if it's Beppo or Killer who is uh, mesmerized by Frankie's new hair, rolled up hairstyle. <laughs> And uh, we're cutting to Kid, who's there basically with the, with the with the rest of the crew. And he's eating. He's like, "Don't get too buddy buddy with them." 
we can't let our guards down till we're safely back at sea. Uh, I don't know how the and then and then we're cutting to one of the crew members say I don't know how the information how I don't know how the information is going to leak but you can be damn sure that the papers will catch wind of what's happened with the emperor's gone we're going to have the biggest targets on our back yep yep like once the world finds out what's happened here it's gonna it's gonna explode it's like a powder cake ready to be lit like and then we're seeing Law he's there at the port as well with his crew that's right. Being in a closed off country doesn't necessarily mean they can't find out, but it does mean we have no way to monitor what their response will be. And then we're kind of Beppo basically talking uh, to everyone. It's like, do you think the captain's bounty will, they might raise it to an unthinkable large amount? Uh, upper, upper, upper. And then we're getting upper, upper, upper in the background. And yeah, it's Apu. Apu is alive. He is here. He is coming. And you can take a wild guess who it would be that would go and leak the information to everyone. I'm wondering if this was Apu actually leaking the info to CP, CP9. Maybe maybe that was Apu talking to them on the Dendamushi, but I think it might have been X Drake properly, or maybe it was Green Ball. I'm not too sure. I don't. Uh, it was a bit. It was a bit weird uh, who it was that was talking to them on on the pool. But yeah, we got Apu there, and Apu and 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 a number. So yeah, Apu's there with a number of this giant number dude, and he's like, "You're right. It leaked. How could this be possible?" And kids like, "It was obviously you, you damn bastards!" Like, yeah, <laughs> it was obviously him. And Apu just taking the freaking uh, bounty. So we get the bounty reveals. Well, we're not, not necessary. We don't get the reveals, but he's got the bounty posters in his hands, and he's like, "Oh, oh I think it's the, it's, I think it's the newspaper, technically speaking." But I imagine the bounties are included with it. He's like, "Check it out, the bounties you're all so curious about." Abba, abba, abba. I want to take a peek. So yeah, uh, and, and he throws it at kids' feet, and it's like, "It's all in there. Your updated bounties and the names of those who have been newly dubbed emperors of the sea." So we get confirmation that we have new emperors of the sea with 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 Kaido and Big Mama defeated. It, it, it's obvious that someone was going to fill the gap. So our obvious assumptions are that it's Luffy, Kid, and Law that are going to become the new uh, the new emperors. So at this point, one would assume then we're getting five emperors then because we still have Blackbeard and Shanks. That is not the case, actually. That is not the case. Uh, it ends up it ends up being the most unexpected thing. That's gonna that that, that you know uh, uh, in terms of what happens in the next chapter. But yeah, before I continue on, we cut to the last part of the chapter, and this is the chapter that introduced Green Ball. I'm sorry, we we already saw Green Ball before, but this is actually the chapter that ends with Green Ball, and we we see him. We, we we at this point we don't know it's him. We just see the silhouette, and he's got a flower petal on the back, and he's flying through the air in the mountains of Wano. And it's like, tell me your exact position. I just said, uh, Zak Zakazaki uh, son, I'm in the sky. So this dude is talking to Akainu. Be more specific. Ah, I can see Wano up ahead. You are not to do anything unnecessary. Understood, Arayu Kugayu? So Green Bull, I know. I already know. Goodness. So, Admiral Green Bull is in play. So Green Bull, the new Admiral that we heard about that we haven't properly seen yet, has entered the picture and he's going into Wano. And he's working, and he's working on the orders for my Kainu. It most likely was him that was talking to CP9 uh, at the beginning of the chapter. But yeah, crazy crap happening. We get the reveals of the bounties. We get the reveals of uh, the setups. Basically, we get the setup that there's new emperors of the sea. Everyone's celebrating. We're about to have a huge banquet, and then we have one of the admirals, one of the freaking admirals, flying in into Wano. So yeah, this arc is not over. If you're sitting there going, oh yeah, this arc is over with, with, with Kaido's defeat. No, we're still in Act 3. Act 3 has still not ended. We haven't got an, an end of Act 3. And this arc is still going. So most likely there's still a good few chapters left. And now we have to deal with this Admiral. What does this mean? How is this going to end? I don't know. But things are either about to go very, very bad. Or they're about to go very, very right. It depends. This could be a similar situation to what happened with when Grop came to uh, Ida's, uh, to Water 7. And we only got a little skirmish and then a bunch of exposition. But uh, Or this is going to turn out very worse than we thought. We still need to find the road polygraph. And Nico Robin was not in this chapter. She was by, you know, she's somewhere. Which gives the opportunity for this guy to come in and swoop her up and, and escape maybe. So it, it could very likely happen. Nico could end up getting kidnapped. We don't know, but we'll see. We'll see. So and that's the end of that chapter, guys, and I'm going to move on and start reading chapter 1053. I hope you like that. Remember to like 
and subscribe. And yeah, this is going to be a long video. It's going to be a very big, long video because uh, I'm actually reacting to this and I'm reading it and it's going very slow. This is this is a very this was a very long chapter in terms of very much exposition and interactions and that. So very good. Can't wait to see more. Anyway, guys, uh, let's move on to the next part. Yeah, shall we? All right. So we're back here with uh, One Piece chapter 1053. And yeah, we're just going to move on to that chapter then. Uh, so yes. Man, this is going to be a long day. It's too hot. It's one. It's it's 1.30 right now at, at p.m. I haven't eaten that. I haven't had breakfast. I'm just doing these videos at the moment. Like, I'm exhausted. I, just, I need to do this. And i got to do... Oh, but let's, let's just keep up with it, man. Like, Luffy will keep up. We'll endure. So, we start with a cover page to celebrate One Piece Odyssey, which I do not care about. Uh, I don't play the One Piece video games. Uh, get back to me when they release a Ninja, a Ninja Storm style One Piece game. So, we're uh, chapter 1053, The New Emperors. And yeah, you can imagine it's going to be a big chapter, I imagine. This is the first time I'm reading this as well, so this is going to be my legit reaction to this. So we're cutting straight to the Holy Land. Again, all shook up. What is the meaning of this photo? We never approved it, and I thought we told you to remove the D. So admit... <laughs> no, sir. We got a Marine on the, on the Dendamu. No, sir. We weren't told about that. The photo was sent in by CPO's Gunarika Sama. Reprint it! The world cannot be permitted to see this. We've been trying to contact the printers, but I'm afraid it's no news. So we're cutting to printers. We're cutting to freaking Morgan and his birds. Uh, then cease distribution immediately. So you've got the seagulls just flying with the information now. Wah, wah, what, a mac what a mystifying appearance. Uh, go, go. All right, people. It's up to us to spread this around the globe. Cypher pulls transmission from Wano broke off right after they spotted Big Bomb's ship. The gears of the world won't stop turning. I won't let the propaganda slide when the real story is this thrilling. It's like a live show. I can't get enough. So, so the the it seems the Wano forces outside. It's it, it seems the Marine forces outside of Wano are being confronted by Big Mom's ship. Did Big Mom survive? We don't know. She was in a crevice of a volcano. The volcano shot out. She could have landed on the ship. She could have. Or she she's landed into the sea wall. She's dead now. God knows. Uh, she is 100% coming back. Kaido and her are definitely coming back, but, uh, but for now, they you know, that, uh, yeah, for now, ooh. and then you've got Morgan doing his own thing, Apu obviously released the info to, to him, and he, and he's, and he's spreading it like wildfire, and the Gorose can't do anything to control, control it. These guys are supposed to be the most powerful, and they can't control this, so yeah, at this point, it's a nice, uh, signifying for shattering of their power slipping, basically, at this point, uh, and they don't even want people to know that Luffy's a D. Like, uh, never mind the fact that that, that 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 you know he's been called that since the very beginning. But now, but yeah, uh, we're cutting to people getting the newspaper and reading it. The bombshell news of the defeat of the emperors, Big Bob and Kaido, spread very rapidly around the world. The three captains responsible for ending their decades of domain. And now we're cutting to, and now we're seeing was and then we're cutting to Udo Wano. And boss, three billion captain. That's amazing. So we're cutting back to uh, we're cutting back to uh, a kid and law, and we're seeing their bounties. Holy crap, we're seeing their bounties. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're continuing with that word that was said. The three captains responsible for ending their decades of domain were all issued an extraordinary bounty by the government. So we got dead or alive, uh, you, uh, uh, Eustace, uh, Eustace, Captain Kid, a free. I'm assuming that's billion. Three billion. Wanted, dead or alive. Trafalgar Law. Three billion. And now we got Luffy, and it's a picture. You know, kid's picture is funny because it looks like like he's smiling or attempting a laugh, and Law just being an action pose. But then you got Luffy's pic, and who the hell, who the hell was able to take that picture? Like it's it's the pic when he's like laughing, like like he can't like when he's when he's revived, and he was he was like laughing, and he couldn't believe that he was alive. So I managed to get a picture of that. Dead or alive, Monkey D. Luffy, 3 billion. Monkey D. Luffy, Eustace, Captain Kidd, and Trafalgar Law are now worth 3 billion berry apiece. So that's insane, okay? Like, it's like they've reached the minimum of how much the, the bounty can go up. I feel like it should even be higher, but it's like, I think that's like the highest it can go. And then, and then yeah, we're cutting, to, we're cutting to the pool. You've got, uh, you've got freaking Apu there. Hey, where did that old kid run off to? He had a funny look in his eye. 
And oh my god, oh my god! And you got you got killer that gonna be gonna be to the flower capital. Fu 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 fu! It's kid we're talking about. There's only one thing on his mind. Let's follow him. I heard there's a festival today. Perfect. Let's celebrate. Then you got law. There looks like things are, are getting complicated. Yep, things are indeed getting complicated. We're cutting to some dude bringing in like food and trays and stuff. We shall start with a course of cloud air mushroom and and crown crown daisy soup. Then a plate of a jizzy tofu, followed by a bowl of lotus roots. We also have small sunomono dishes as a side. Oh yes, do not forget the tall bow, bow, bow. Everything must be impeccable. These are not your run-of-the-mill patrons. Make sure everything is mushed up and boiled properly and triple check for poison. So these guys are checking for poison as well, like, while they, while they, while, as they're going to feed all of these guys. Now we're coming to the main flower capital. Now then, time to serve. I put everything I have into this menu. It is truly a full course meal fit for a shogun. Please enjoy. And yeah, we're, we're getting a lineup of food. We got Jubei being the first one sitting there. And the guy who's just like, please enjoy. He's like, where is everyone? Wow, it looks delicious. Thank you for all your effort. I'm afraid the others couldn't wait the full two hours. From the sounds of it, they're really going to town out there, aren't they? So these guys weren't even waiting for the food. They, they went out to celebrate. Everything's free tonight. Free? They got shooting games and goldfish snooping. There's chocolate bananas. So yeah, it's Luffy's out there. Luffy's out there with Yamato and Chopper celebrating. Like Yamato, Chopper, and Luffy eat into the heart's content. A Yakuza Boshi, Tokiyaki. I really want Tokiyaki. I wonder what that tastes like. Look, grilled squid and candy apples. Cotton candy too. This is my first festival. It's amazing. And the children are with them and they're celebrating. It's insane. Whoa, you go and you got Brooke on top of something just playing his freaking kid. Oh, yeah, listen up. This next number was a favorite of Brother Oda. <laughs> like, yo, you go, Brooke. Uh, and, and then you got uh, uh, Hayori there. It's called a moon. Oh, no, she's with Brooke. Hayori's with Brooke singing this. It's called Moon Princess. And you got Princess Hayori. People cheering like, with the fans and then we're cutting to the castle basement and we're cutting to Robin finally we're cutting to Robin we're seeing what she's doing and we see with her coming from behind we got the Tengu guy we're on the Tengu guy that was looking off the Yazoo's daughter and I think Otama and we can't I, mean, I think a lot of us theorized this guy has to be important because we never saw his freaking face why is he wearing a mask it has to be someone we know and yeah you like them Nico Robin Tengu son how do you know my name you're looking at my personal collection. Oh, this is his stuff. They're my majestic Kokushi dolls. Cute, aren't they? Not really. <laughs> you know, and yeah, yeah, and yeah, Rob is like, not really. Huh? Why would your collection be down here? This was originally something of a secret hobby room for me, however. How I ended up. And the Poneglyph is in the room. It's in the freaking basement. There it is. There is the Poneglyph right there by the side. Holy crap. I ended up in prison down here for a number of years. Imprisoned? I thought you were a swordsmith. Who exactly are you? I took to I took to smithing because I had talent for it, but it was always just a hobby. Governing is such weary work after all. Governing, oh my god, and he takes off the mask and we see his face and what? I am Kozuki Sukiyaki, father of Kozuki Oda. Oh my god. Confirmed. I don't know if a lot of people had this theory or not. Uh, uh, I mean, we, we heard that his dad had died, but that doesn't seem to have been the case. Like, he had been poisoned by Orochi, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Former Shogun of Wanu. This dude was there the whole time. Oh, my God. And Norman's like, does Momocha know about this? He does not, and I do not intend to tell him. I would not be surprised if some of his retainers have deduced my identity. But how could I possibly show my face now? I am the one who allowed Orochi to come to power. I was barely able to escape this room by the time I had older uh, but room by the time I had older was already dead and Wano had changed. I contemplate it. I contemplate it. I come to. I contemplated committing seppuku there and then. To Tengo San. I, it should be somewhere in this country. And he's like, "What are you talking about?" And that's Mars drop, the ancient weapon. Pluto. Holy crap! Holy crap! Pluto is not in Alabaster. It's not in Alabaster. It's it's in Wano. It's in Wano. Is this why she is this why she lied to Crocodile that whole time? Like Crocodile came there expecting to find Pluto in what in, in in Alabaster, and she was like, "Oh, well, there's no point telling this dude where it is because it's all the way in Wano, and he's not going to be getting in there." Like, oh my god, oh my god, what a revelation! Have we seen it potentially? 
At least that's what the polyglyph said. In al in Arabasta. Oh my God! And and he, what does what does what does the dad say? The grandpa, indeed, it is here. Oh, and what if the world government attacked Alabasta to get Pluto? That whole cleansing. If you know, if they did, and they didn't find it there the whole time, or maybe this is why they're trying to get to Wado because they know it's in there. Oh my God. Pri former prisoner of mine, Yudo. So now we're cutting to Yudo, and there's some big explosion happening at the uh, castle. And carnage. We see a bunch of people. Do you guys remember uh, the fourth great ninja war when, when the tree, when the tentails turned into a tree and it started shooting out roots and absorbing people and shit and, and basically sucking them dry and, and stabbing or wrapping around them? This is what this looks like. You've got a bunch of beast pirates who have been stabbed through and it looks like their energy or life force has been drained. Ten bucks who did this. It's pretty obvious who did this. And we're cutting to King. He's been wrapped up and he's getting stabbed. And there's a Queen as well, King Son, Queen Son. And, and he, he's getting drained. Haha, <laughs> uh, hey, post diet physique doesn't suit me, you hear. Uh, Queen's alive. And it's Green Bull. Yep, who else was it going to be? Green Bull is a waddle right now. He's sucking him dry. He's even stabbed through a barrel of beer and he's sucking that dry. Give it a rest already. At my rank, I'd lose face if I let a few commanders like you get the best of me. Let this sink in. This Admiral dude just came in and he kicked King and, Gre and Queen's ass. Okay? Uh, you know, Sanji and, and Zoro were, were fighting those dudes. And they barely beat them. And this dude just comes in and he just wrecked the crap out of them. I w I'd lose face if I let a few commanders like you get the best of me. The Navy doesn't have manpower to waste on the mess you've left us. Not that I expected much of you bozos. And he's drinking. He's got. He's using his plant powers, whatever it is, to drink from the freaking beer, from the barrel. And we're seeing his face. Yo, this dude looks like a badass. Uh, he's got sunglasses and everything. And his hands are like freaking, freaking fawns and wood. Oh my god. The booze wasn't anything special. And he's talking to someone on the Den Den Bushi. Uh, you shouldn't, you, you should have let it age longer. Ring, ring, ring. Click. Hello, this is, yeah, I'm in Wano. Bring a warship over, huh? Oh, Ryukuk, don't tell me, uh, uh, Zaka, uh, uh, Zaka, son what I'm up to. Got it? See ya. So he's telling him not, he, who was he talking to? Navy Headquarters Admiral Ryuku, uh, 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 Aramaki? Aramaki, so Green Bull Aramaki. So he wants a great warship to be brought, a warship. What does that entail? Is he gonna do a buster call? And don't tell, don't tell Arkainu. Who was he talking to? I've always dug his style. No half measures. I'm itching to get his approval. I can see it now. He wants to get Arkainu's approval, and he likes his style. No half because absolute justice. Is he gonna do a buster call on Wano? What the hell is gonna happen? And he's looking at a bounty poster of Luffy. He's sure to give me an attaboy if I bring him this brat's head. Oh, he's going after Luffy. So yeah, guys, for anyone who thought this was going to be like a chillaxing time, it doesn't look like it. It looks like, it, lo it looks like, yeah, it, lo it, lo it looks like this arc is going to end with, 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 with Luffy and the others potentially having to fight uh, um, uh, Aramaki, basically. Flower Capital. So we're back to the Flower Capital. Celebrations. No one is aware of what's about to happen. One more time from the top to the Ninja Pirate Mink Samurai Alliance. Who's that? To the Retainers, Yakuza, and the rest of Wano. Keep going. And you got Luffy there. Way to go. You all fought great. Well, is Luffy saying all of this? We'll leave the toasting to you. Yeah, yeah. You are a chief rallier. And now we're cutting to Momonosuke talking to a Yamato flashback. He's remembering this. This was outside Onigashima, I think, after the battle. Don't tell anybody in Wano about me. But why? Because I don't want to be a hero. Is this, what? Is this, is this Luffy speaking? Oh, no, but this is Momonosuke talking to Yamato. I don't get, oh, no, no, Yom, uh, yo, no, Yamato's got Luffy in her arms. Remember when he fell and she catched him? This is right after that, and she's talking to Momonosuke. He's the one talking, yeah, he's pointing a finger at Momonosuke. He's talking to Momonosuke. Don't tell anybody in Wano about me, but why? Because I don't want to be a hero. So Luffy is the one who told Momonosuke not to tell anyone about him. Wow. Like, he's acting like Saitama here. And, and to be fair, Luffy doesn't want to be known as a hero. Remember, this is, remember what, back in Fishman Island, when, when Jubei was like, you got to help us, you got to be the hero. He's like, no, I'm not doing that. No, 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 no. He wanted to do it in a way where he still comes across as a pirate, right? He doesn't want to come across as a hero, like. So that's very interesting. Uh, Luffy's still continuing with that uh, mindset, basically. And then we got a kid coming in towards Luffy. Oh my God, Strahd, huh? If, if I crush you here... He's here to kill Luffy? What is with this dude? Why not so? Uh, 
uh, they've been they've been lit. All right, here's to all the feasts to come. Here we go. And, and Luffy's grabbing Kit and he's bringing him close to him. Oh my god, he's hugging him. Cheers. Let's drink and party till dawn. So <laughs> Kit's here to kill him, and Luffy's like, no, we're not having that. No killing here today. We're we're celebrating. We're cutting to the straw heads down below watching. You got Shinobu, you got Nami and Pan Sanji and Pano. You've got you've got Zoro with uh, with Usopp, Frankie, and Donjiro. Da you've got Raizo with Yazu's kid and Okiki oh, oh, all celebrating. We're cutting to a uh, dog Viper and and uh, sorry Cat Viper and 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 Dog Duke and Carrot and the other Minx so, uh, and I think there's Wanda there celebrating. We're cutting to the Yakuza and the Old Man Pirates sure are rowdy. This is the this is the biggest and wildest festival I've ever seen. We're seeing Otama with with a little dog and 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 the giraffe dude. And and I think is that who is that? Is that Kinemon sitting with I think that might be Kinemon with his wife, maybe, on a bench from the back celebrating. We're cutting to freaking Beppo and and, and and Law's crew. We're cutting to Killer and Kid's crew. Where a kid like he's he's pushing Luffy off. He's like, I want nothing to do with this crap. And he's getting to see here. Oh, he's throwing the wanted poster into Luffy's face, and Luffy's eyes just like exploding. I like, see here, I came to kill you. I don't really know what's going on on the outside, but Luffy's just losing it. And we're cutting to the review of the new Emperors. So, you know what? For those of you who haven't read the chapter yet, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna tell you right now who the new Emperors are. This is volume twenty-five. This is volume twenty-five. Forget the goat. That's Oda. Okay, that's Oda there. Okay, that's Oda representing himself. This is volume. I don't know who this guy in the back is, but forget him. And just look at the other four. That's what the Emperor's on, okay? That's what the Emperor's on. I don't know if this was some foreshadowing or whatever, like Oda did years ago, but, oh my god. People were theorizing this and saying that as a joke. But yeah, Redhead Shanks, they've announced the names of the new four Emperors. Blackbeard Teach, what? Straw Hat Luffy, and, and, oh my god, the, the bombastic clown, Boggy. Boggy is one of the four Emperors. What the hell? And like, I, <laughs> Buggy is one of the four emperors. Who thought that? Who thought that? Who, who went into this thinking, oh my god, Buggy is going to be one of the four emperors? This is insane. And it, it kind of makes sense because this dude, had, like the last time we saw him, we found out he like a big mercenary group. He was one of the warlords. Things went wrong. Who has he recruited to his group to make him this powerful? Okay, because surely, surely someone has joined him, right? Like, like, that he's able to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm the emperor now because i got all these people with me. Like, surely, it is Mihawk and his crew? Because I, I would assume he would join Shanks. Is Hancock there, maybe? What is going on? What is going on? This is insane. Luke, Buggy, is a, <laughs> Buggy is one of the emperors. Oh, my God. Respect to Buggy Sama, man. Respect to the clown. He, he, he did it. He rose to the top, okay? Okay. It, it, he showed that if you bullshit your way through life, you will make it to the top. And then we cut to Amaraki, and he's like, we're really going whole hog on the music and festivals. Oh, they're really going whole hog. And he's outside the flower capital. He's outside Onigashima. He's walking towards it. The, the flowers are blooming on the ground as he's walking. As he's walking, flowers are blooming from the ground. Well, we Marines aren't in such a good mood, especially since the rest of the world is a real mess right now. And that gives us confirmation that there's some stuff that has happened outside the world that, has, that is basically batshit insane. And it gives us further confirmation, maybe a hint, that Amaraki is going to be the one that's going to be telling Luffy and the others what exactly has happened. So we might be getting flashbacks and big reveals in the coming chapters. The times are changing. And oh my god, four week break, One Piece will resume, issue 34. And yeah, this is it guys, we're going to four week break, this is it, it's done. We're not getting One Piece for a, for a month, for four weeks. And we're ending it on this big reveal of who the new emperors are. And Amaraki, one of the admirals, going into Wano, wanting to take Luffy's head. And, and some big crap that's probably happened. And yeah, things, oh my god, things are going wild, holy crap, holy crap. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. 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 I'm, I need to eat, man. But I'm still not done with these videos. I gotta do more. I gotta do more reviews than that. Oh. What a chapter. 
What a chub tool. What a way to end on. Oda. Oda, you crazy, crazy bee. What are you doing? What are you doing ending on like that going on a break for four weeks? What are you doing? This arc's not even over yet and you're going on a break? No. No. <laughs> four weeks in a row you've been giving us chapters, man. What are you doing? Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. I'm going to collapse. I'm, I, I actually feel like I'm going to fade. too hot. It's too hot. Holy shit. That was the chapter, guys. I hope you liked it. As always, remember to like and subscribe. And I shall see you when I shall see you in four weeks' time when we continue with 1054. It's going to be a doozy. Take care. And bye, guys.